السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده وصلى الله وسلم على من لا نبي بعده وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين My beloved brothers and sisters, that recitation took us straight to Makkah. It's not just like, it's a little bit like Makkah. No, it's almost identical. Actually, the feel and the sound, superb, I was actually in Makkah. I don't know about you guys. So Alhamdulillah, and more than anything, the words were so powerful and so apt. Do you know which surah he recited? Which surah? Surah Yusuf, do you know the story of Yusuf or at least a summary or synopsis of it? Put up your hand if you do. Okay, can I pick someone here to come up and... Ah, all the hands have gone down, right? No, it's okay, I'm teasing you. So Alhamdulillah, that's the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. He was gifted by Allah in a billion and one ways. And he was tested by Allah in so many ways too. Tonight is a night of motivation. I'm going to seize this opportunity to speak about the verses that he recited because, mashallah, he read a large chunk of the end of the story. Some of you who know a little bit of Arabic might have picked up some of it, where right at the end, when the brothers and what they did to their own brother was actually, you know, exposed it brings tears to the eyes to just listen to those verses. قَالُوا أَإِنَّكَ لَأَنْتَ يُوسُفُ قَالَ أَنَا يُوسُفُ وَهَذَا أَخِي They asked after being cornered, Is it that you, you are Yusuf? Because what you're telling us, in other words, it, nobody could have known except him. We did things in our lives that no one knows except the person. And he says, yes, I'm Yusuf. This is my brother. Imagine for how many years this man suffered at the hands of his own brothers or because of what they did. Let me take you back. And the reason I take you back is in every one of us, in the lives of every one of us, we will have so much in terms of blessings of Allah, billions of blessings. But we will have a few challenges. And Allah promises you, Wallahi, my sisters, my brothers, Allah promises you and He says, if you try to count the favors that I have bestowed upon you, you will never be able to count them all. Impossible. But if you'd like to count the challenges and the tests that we've put in your life, you will always be able to count them. Subhanallah. If I ask you, I can't ask you about the blessings of Allah because Allah says, Wa in la tuhsuha. If you are going to try and count all the favors of Allah upon you, you're not going to be able to do that. So let me not ask you about what the favors of Allah upon you are. You have to ponder, you have to think, you have to realize, you have to work with those who are less privileged, those who are challenged in one way or another, and you begin to realize. But I can ask you a question, a serious one. How many challenges and difficulties and hardships do you face in your life? Wallahi, I swear by Allah that every one of us is able to count them. Think for a moment. One, two, think of the problems you have, the issues. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you have eight issues. Nine maybe. Not even nine in the case of most of us. Do you agree with me? Come on, talk to me. You agree with me? Is that not the favor of Allah? That's why I started off by saying billions of favors he was blessed with, but many trials. So all of us will have trials. What did Yusuf alayhi salam have? What was his challenge? The challenge was the jealousy of his brothers overtook them and they started planning and plotting something against him all because of the jealousy. إِنَّ الْحَسَدَ يَأْكُلُ الْحَسَنَاتِ كَمَا تَأْكُلُ النَّارُ الْحَطَبِ Jealousy will eat away at your good deeds in the same way that fire would eat a dry log. And Allah has warned us about it. So, 
as much as I'm warned not to be jealous of others, do you know nowadays if you sit and watch all the movies and the videos and the, the, the cartoons and so many other things and you watch the trends and whatever, it is said that these are designed in a way that make you a nasty person. You find little girls, young girls at school, the way they start, I don't want to use a bad word, I could have, but let's leave it, we're in Luton. <laughs> but I tell you, they, they would mock, swear, belittle each other and have their little cliques and they wouldn't mind at all making someone feel so small just because they're not in their clique. By saying such a bad word, the same is happening to the young boys, as young as five and, and ten. Why? Because that's what it is. That's the way the world is heading. We are here to remind you, don't allow that to happen. Take the good from everywhere. Take the good. When you notice something that you're not supposed to be taking, don't take it. Leave it. I'm going to leave it simply because this is a bad habit. This is not a good thing. It's going to come back to haunt me. You grow older and you have bad habits. How are you going to get married? I remember, I mean, earlier Brother Joinal joked about these guys are married and those guys are not because of the people who didn't enjoy the holiday and whatnot. Let's pick on that for a moment, okay? I tell you, I met a brother and he told me, and this was, it's, I'm giving you one example, but there are people from both sides, brothers and sisters. And you find people telling you, I'm looking to get married. And you meet so many people, I'm sure you would have someone uh, who would probably, you know, who you would think would be suitable. And I say, what type of a person are you looking for? Default, I need to know, right? Because everyone's got a different taste and a different, you know, type of person they're looking for. So they start rattling out things. Think for a moment, those of you who are not married, what are the qualities that you would love in a spouse? So you want A, B, C, D, E, F, G, okay? Let's say you want seven things. I promise you, in a lot of cases, there are people with more than what you're looking for, but they're not looking for a person like you. There we go. You follow what I'm saying? They're there. You might know really beautiful, wonderful people who meet your criteria, but do you meet theirs? That's the question. Wallahi. And this is where we fail. That's the reason why you're not enjoying your holiday. <laughs> Allah grant you guys ease and all of us, every one of us. So going back to the story of Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, here are the brothers. The brothers are jealous of their own blood. Imagine they came from the same father, different mothers, but they were part of one clan, one group, siblings. Who was the father? A great man, a noble man, a prophet of Allah. Do you think he failed in the upbringing of the children? Not at all. But shaitan comes even to the best of us. And what does he try and do? Take away the qualities you're supposed to be having and give you things that you're not supposed to be having. If it happened to him, wallahi, it can happen to me. If it happened to them, it can happen to us. Am I right? So the same thing we need to ask ourselves constantly, how can I improve myself? The qualities of the heart, they would result if I didn't check them in my failure, in the loss of my happiness, my contentment. They would result in so much negativity simply because I didn't work on myself. Let me remove the hate I have, the selfishness that I have. People are stingy sometimes and stinginess is a quality that's not praised at all. It's something you need to get rid of. I'm not saying give away everything, but at least learn to be compassionate, even if it is a little bit, even if it's through a prayer, even if it's just a feeling in the heart to say, oh Allah, my brothers and sisters are struggling in this part of the world. Help them, grant them ease. Have you ever thought of getting up early for tahajjud, for example, and cry to Allah, not for your own needs, but because of people who are suffering as far away as China, for example. Have you done that? Well, if you have, good news, because I tell you what, I've always said tahajjud is by invite only. I'm sure you've heard me say that. Invitation only. You cannot get up for tahajjud unless Allah's invited you for that. So if you do get up for tahajjud, I was telling some brothers yesterday, one of the signs of the love of Allah for a person is when they don't need to be woken up for fajr. And to make it even better for tahajjud, before the alarm, your eyes open. What happened? Allah woke you up and said, come on, it's time. And you have a smile on your face and you're so happy that you got up before the clock. And then you're up, you made wudu and you're Allahu Akbar. You're enjoying your relation with Allah. That's a sign of the love of Allah. 
And guess what? It's hidden from the eye. Mostly people don't know whether you get up for tahajjud or not. There are some people you may never believe if you were to look at them that this person actually doesn't miss a single tahajjud. It's not a compulsory prayer, but it's a sign of the love of Allah. When you enjoy your ibadah, when you enjoy your acts of worship, it means you've worked on yourself and by the help of Allah, He's allowed you to grow. So work on yourself. People say, guidance is in the hands of Allah. Yes, indeed it is. So who does Allah guide? Allah guides those who try. Those who struggle and strive in our ways, we will, we will grant them guidance. We will guide them. Those who struggle and strive towards us, we will guide them to the right ways, the right paths. That's what Allah says. So what is the criteria to struggle towards something. Work hard towards achieving what is beneficial for you. Here's the hadith. Ihris ala ma yanfa'uka wasta'im billahi wala ta'jaz. That means work hard towards achieving that which you believe is beneficial for you. And seek the help of Allah and don't be lazy. That's what Allah is saying. The rest of it inshallah. We all rely on Allah anyway, not only for the rest, but even for the beginning of it. That's why we ask Allah's guidance all the time, every day, every single day. In every unit of prayer, we're asking Allah's guidance. Oh Allah, guide us to the straight path. I've always said that is the most repeated dua on earth. The most repeated. It's repeated a few billion times a day. What is that dua? What is the supplication that's the most repeated on earth? Wallahi, I swear by Allah, it is ihdina sirat al mustaqim. Guide us to the straight path. Because if you make your five daily prayers, you've already said them minimum 17 times. And if you are one and we're a few billion on earth and half of them pray five times a day, tell me. A quarter of them pray five times a day. May Allah strengthen all of us. How many times did you say, oh Allah, guide me to the straight path? You see? But what's the point of repeating Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim? And for you, it's just a tune and a tone. Sounds nice, man. Cool. See? And you didn't work towards it. You did not work towards it. You need to put an effort, make an effort, a slight bit of an effort, a little millimeter a day, and you get there. You know what needs to be done, and so do I. You know the dark habit that you have that needs to be eradicated. We all have them because we're all human beings. I need to work on a few things in my life. And I still need to work on a few things in my life. And so do every single one of us. Not a single person can come up and say, I don't have any bad habits. Impossible. You're lying. And don't lie to us. Keep it to yourself. I don't need to know. You don't need to know about me. I don't need to know about you. My Lord is Allah, not you. And the same applies vice versa. But I'm going to work. And I'm encouraging you to work towards that goodness. When you've developed your heart, you start feeling love towards others that you found on earth. Because I tell you, when we say the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, who are we talking about? Have you ever thought of it? There are two types of ummah. One is the ummah referring to all those who have responded to the message. They are known as the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But did you ever know there is ummah to da'wah and ummah to listijaba? We are all Ummatul Istijaba. We are all the Ummah that has responded to the Da'wah, that has responded to the call. We accepted the message. So we are known as Ummah who has accepted the message. But the rest of the people on earth are all Ummat a Da'wah. They are all part of the Ummah who is receiving the message. Ummah of the Prophet. That's why the minute you say your Shahada, you join a smaller group known as the Ummah. Of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, referring to those who've accepted it. I hope you've understood this. So, these two types of ummah, we should know that for us to be used to guide a single person towards Allah is better for us than anything material on earth. That's a hadith. Wallahi la an yahdi Allahu bika rajulan wahidan khayrul laka min humri naam. The Prophet ﷺ told Ali radiallahu anhu, he says, Wallahi, if Allah uses you to guide a single person, it's better for you than the most valuable of the material items, meaning the conveyance. It's called the red camel, the most valuable conveyance on earth. 
Today it's not the red camel anymore, it's something else. But we could still use the term red camel. There are camels out there that are perhaps more expensive than your tank 500s and your Mercedes Benzes and so on. You might be wondering what's a tank 500, who knows? You can Google it, inshallah, you'll be surprised. At least I know something you guys don't know. Luton, Luton, mashallah. Next time I come here, you can pick me up in a tank 500, inshallah. By that time, we might have a 600. But my brothers and sisters, I'm going to work on my bad habits, and so do you need to work on your bad habits. Why am I spending time on this? Because the qualities of the heart, that's what matters. When I look at someone else and I feel, you know what, I would give my life to protect this person. They are part of me. Wallahi, when you get to that stage, you are part of an ummah. I swear, when I see someone in, I'm just giving you an example. When I see someone that actually I can relate to this person, this person's part of the ummah. In fact, it extends to humanity at large, any human. That's why the Quran says, if you save a single life without mentioning what religion, without mentioning any other detail, you save a single life, it's as good as saving entire humanity. I'm sure you've heard the verse. Woman ahyaha fakannama ahyannasa jamia. But they there comes a closer and a closer and a closer relation as the circle becomes smaller and smaller and smaller until you get to your own blood. Blood meaning brother, sister. Why do we say blood? Because Allah chose them for you. You didn't choose them. Who's your mother? Who's your father? Who's your brothers and sisters if you have any? They are the ones chosen by Allah. And then we go back to the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. Those same brothers are the ones who plotted because they were jealous. Jealous for what? Who gives elevation, status, wealth, and so on? It's Allah. So if you have a problem with Allah, then you've got a problem with yourself. Because Allah made you. When you work on your qualities and you, be, you start developing that compassion, the feeling for others, I am not the only one on earth. Wallahi, there are people far more valuable than I am on earth. There are people whom Allah loves more than he loves me. Perhaps on earth, they are. There are some whom I might come across if I'm rude to them. What if that person's a friend of Allah? When I spread rumor about them, just what if that person is closer to Allah than I am? So go easy on the people. You never know who's who. Subhanallah. You never know who's who. To be able to greet is an Islamic teaching. To be able to respond to a greeting is a Quranic injunction. You have to. Someone says, Assalamu alaikum. You like it or you don't like it. You have to say, Wa alaikum as salam, the minimum. You like it or you don't like it. You have to say, Wa alaikum as salam, the minimum. May Allah grant us acceptance. Why? Why do we say that's the minimum? The minimum because someone made a prayer for you. May peace be upon you. Wow, what an amazing. Amazing way of greeting people. May peace be upon you. I'm in search of peace. So are you. May peace be upon you. Assalam. All types of peace. I pray that you have good health. I pray that you have contentment. I pray that everything goes good for you. You have a good job. I pray that you get, you know, sustenance from Allah. Your worries are taken care of by Allah. Difficulty is taken away from you. And so, and so much more. I pray for that and the blessings and the mercy of Allah upon you. That's a Muslim when I'm just saying, hi. That's what it is. That's the reason why I won't say hi and bye. I start off with assalamu alaikum. It's our way of greeting. Powerful. And when someone says all of that to you, I mean, what is peace? Peace extends all the way to the hereafter. May peace be upon you on the day of judgment. Why not? Assalamu alaikum. I say, you should feel that. It should hit you. I'm so happy. Man. Someone prayed for me. I remember there was a brother who didn't reply. And I told him, why didn't you reply? He said, that guy's an enemy, man. He's lying. I said, just say, wa alaikum as salam. What's the big deal? What did you lose? So what if they're lying? He says, but, but then I'll be lying as well. I said, well, don't lie. Try and make yourself genuine. Who knows? The dua might be accepted. Imagine someone hating you. Say, may Allah bless you. Yeah. Hey, come on. Come on. You know, you gotta, he's got to just say, I mean, and that's it. Mashallah. But you have to reply back. Imagine when someone gives you such a powerful greeting every day. Do you know, if you look back at the predecessors, 
if they were walking and the wall came between them for a moment, when they met back after the wall, they would say, Assalamu alaikum. Do you know that? Go and read the stories. The companions used to greet each other like, Subhanallah, you won't believe it. We just came back, Assalamu alaikum. I just came back again, Assalamu alaikum. Wow. You know, when I was little, my mom used to say that when I was three years old, I used to walk around the whole compound. My dad was the imam in the masjid, and I was, mashallah, this I'm talking about the early 70s, uh, the mid 70s, inshallah. Somebody here actually knew my date of birth, subhanallah. Now, there's a, there's a, there's a boy here, and he just says, uh, I was born on the same day as you. And he was right. Wow, subhanallah. Mashallah, mashallah. Well done. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah, you'll be better than I am, you know. But. She, my mother used to say, or my mother told me that when you were little, three years old, you used to go around walking the whole compound. Anyone you see, salam alaikum, salam alaikum, salam. Until one of her friends came home to complain, your son, little boy, walking all around the compound, greeting you, salam alaikum, salam alaikum. He's forcing us to greet back and so on. My mother says, it's okay, tolerate him, mashallah. But that was me. And I think to myself, I wonder why I used to do that. Probably was just impressed. Salam alaikum, salam alaikum. You can imagine a little boy walking around. Mashallah. So I, I, when I looked at that aunt, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give her a good life, she's still alive. I wanted to tell her, instead of going to my mother and telling her, oh, so cute. You went to complain. Can you imagine? Allahu Akbar. I must have been quite a rough looking guy then, man. So we work on our qualities. We need to have. We need to have a feeling towards others, a positive feeling. Sometimes people do negative things to you, really, really nasty things. And I want to take a moment to address that today. People do nasty things. How should you, how should you process that? Number one, protect yourself from that. So you don't need to keep on you know, being in the company of those who are really causing harm to you. If you can help them and you're a mentor or you're a teacher or you're a person who's trained to help others or you think you can, by all means, keep on interacting and help them and help them to come out of it. That is level one. That is the top of all. If you are and you can, to a degree, now I can. I don't mind interacting with haters. I really don't mind. But... There's a point because we are human beings, it starts affecting us and it bothers you and it starts affecting your health. At that juncture, you need to know together with seeking the protection of Allah from this type of behavior and these type of people, you need to step back because a believer is not bitten from the same direction twice. Why should I keep on hearing someone saying you're stupid? You're stupid. And they look at you. You are stupid. And they keep looking at you and you're stupid. And you just say, hmm, tolerating, I'm a good Muslim. You start believing that. That's why we're taught not to tell our children such words. Don't ever belittle your kids. They start believing those words. They really start believing those words. So don't say that. Say good things to your kids. Empower them. If you want to correct them, correct them by all means. You must. It's your duty, but respectfully. That's what we're taught. So you take a step back and there comes a time when you can cut a relationship because of how toxic it has become. The, what they're saying to me, the harm that is reaching me is unbearable. It's affecting my relation with Allah, my mind, my health. I can't sleep at night and so on. But when you go back to Allah, it will help you remedy it where you start realizing, you know what? That person's not in the equation. It's me and Allah. That's what it is. We always read the Quran and in the Quran Allah says, Wallahu yuhibbul muhsineen. Allah loves those who do good. So we do good. Why do we do good? Many people do good because they think the person they're doing good to deserves it. I'm going to be kind to these guys because you know what? They're really good guys. You know who's a winner? A winner is the one who's kind to those who are kind and unkind. They are kind to others because Allah loves those who are kind and not connected to whether they are nice people or not nice people. The minute you are kind to someone because you think they deserve it, you will be let down. But if I am nice to you because I believe Allah loves those who are nice and kind, I am never let down. No matter how you react, even if you let me down one day, but in actual fact, I did the goodness to you because 
Allah loves those who do good, not because you actually deserved it. Wallahu yuhibbul muhsineen. I was good to you, I was kind to you, I greeted you, I prayed for you, I reached out to you, I gave you, I helped you up, not because I want anything in return. Innama nutu'imukum liwajhi Allahi, la nuridu minkum jaza'an wa la shukura. Allah says, those who give and those who feed others and those who help others, the true believers are those who say that we have done what we've done, we've fed you, for the sake of Allah and not because we want anything. We do not want from you a recompense and not even a thank you. We don't even want you to say thank you because we did it for Allah. Where are we getting to? So when someone's done bad to you, look at Yusuf alayhi salam. His brothers did bad, very bad. They tried to kill him. They threw him in the well because they then decided let's not be that nasty. They lied to the father. This young boy, they didn't bother whether he was alive or not. To them, he was dead. And then when he was taken up from the pit that he was put into, the people who took him sold him. Imagine, they sold him. He went in as a slave. When he went in, those who received him and he worked for them accused him. The accusation was false. Imagine one after the other. And so they imprisoned him. He's now sitting in prison and he's saying, Subhanallah, what is he saying? He's thanking Allah for the blessings that Allah gave him in terms of knowledge and wisdom when he was so young. And he was recognized by his face. Do you know that? Those prisoners who were with him, they recognized him by his face. And they told him, you look like a good man. You look like a wise, intelligent man. We want to ask you, we've had some dreams. So would you be able to tell us what the meanings of these dreams are? And that's how he decided, it's okay, you can ask me. When they asked him the dreams, he said, let me seize a moment to remind you of who Allah is, your maker. Myself, my forefathers, we've worshipped just him and only him. And that was the message. And he spoke about it. And he seized the opportunity to give that powerful message. Then he interpreted the dreams. And right at the end, do you know what happened? The brothers, Allah created a scenario where they needed to come for food, for survival. To the very office that this man was in charge of. Those who want to drop you, my brothers and sisters, if you are steadfast and you continue beautifully in your relationship with Allah and you have a kind heart and you care for people and your connection with Allah is in order, Wallahi, I promise you a day will come when those who planned your downfall, worked towards it, will actually be far lower than you and you'll be somewhere in Mars. Subhanallah. By the way, I don't mean eating those chocolates. But I mean, you'll be somewhere high above. That's what I mean. By the will of Allah. And you'll be above in a way that doesn't come with arrogance. People will pick up immediately. No arrogance. No pride. No haughtiness. No. We're just normal. Allah, what He's given you, He can take it away now. Right now. What has Allah given you? He's given us a lot. Do you know He can take it away right now? In the same way, if he's taken something away from you, do you know he can give it back to you right now and even better than what he took away from you? Allahumma ajirni fi musibati wa khlufli khayram minha. When we suffer something, what do we say? Oh Allah, help me, grant me recompense in my suffering. Give me something better than what you've taken away from me. Subhanallah. So this is why, calm down. When you suffer and you've struggled, process it correctly as a believer. Like I said, you're coming from people, learn to understand what you need to do towards them. You can help them help. You cannot, you don't need to. I cannot. I'm not given the capacity by Allah to, talk, to, to, to actually manage what's happening coming from this person. I'm going to take a step back. Could be a close relation sometimes. Depending on whether you've exhausted all avenues or not, you take a step back, inshallah. And then what happens? If it is a calamity that befell you, something that has befallen you, and 
you are struggling because of something Allah took away from you, then take it in your stride. The owner of the thing that was taken away from you will give you better than what he took away from you. 100%. 100%. But it requires a little bit of time, patience, dedication, connection with Allah. And just go easy on yourself. Thank Allah for the little things. Live it day by day. Thank Allah for the little things. You have food, you have accommodation, you have a little bit of this, that. You are surviving. MashaAllah. Thank Allah for that. The more you thank Allah... For the little that is given you, he will multiply it. in shakartum la azidan nakum. Show gratitude, Allah says, I will multiply, give you more. No gratitude, I take away. That's why there are some people, Allah took everything away from them. They are so content and so happy. And some people, they have everything, but they're not happy. It's to do with the connection with Allah. So Allah Almighty is telling us about this Beautiful story that occurred. These people planned to, to trample upon this man whom Allah elevated as a direct result of what they did. Their plan to drop him was exactly Allah's plan to elevate him. You follow? So much so that if they had not taken him to that well and dropped him in, he wouldn't have come out where he came out. He wouldn't have been sold and that wouldn't have happened. So it's like a skittle effect reverse. And listen to the most serious and amazing lesson from that entire story. And there are hundreds of lessons. The, the most amazing part is when he says, yes, I am Yusuf and this is my brother. What did he say immediately after that to these guys who wanted to see him dead and for them he was dead? Brothers. He says, Ana Yusuf wa hadha akhi qad manallahu alayna. Allah has indeed favored us. I am Yusuf, this is my brother. Allah has favored us. Indeed, the one who has developed the correct relation with Allah, meaning develop their taqwa, consciousness of Allah, and the one who is patient. Those are the two qualities you need. Patience, which means it's going to take some time, and taqwa, steadfastness. Consciousness of Allah. I always say taqwa, the deeper meaning of it is to develop the correct relationship with Allah that will save you from hellfire. Grant you entry into Jannah, inshallah. What will happen to those who have sabr and taqwa? This man is telling them, Allah will never waste the reward of those who do good. Which means goodness is in those two things, sabr and taqwa. My brothers and sisters, whatever you're going through, Sabr, taqwa. Be conscious of Allah. Don't allow yourself to fall. And if you've ever fallen out of human error, come back in repentance quickly, as soon as you can. Oh Allah, forgive my shortcomings. I know. Forgive my sins. I know. Those that I don't know. Forgive me. Grant me steadfastness. If I have fallen, oh Allah, I have not fallen out of defiance of you. You are my Lord. You dictate. I believe in everything. I know what's halal, what's haram. Oh Allah, I'm trying my best wherever I have made a mistake. It's human weakness, not defiance of your majesty. So forgive me. And Allah says, forgive. Like I say, the biggest hope that I have. And the greatest smile on my face when it comes to me looking at tawbah and forgiveness and knowing that Allah's forgiven me, inshallah, by his will and mercy. You know what it is? Something unique. It is what the first of our species, my greatest grandfather and yours, did. What did he do? Well, Allah sent him, Allah created him in a beautiful garden known as Jannah. You know, there is a detail as to where exactly that was. Was it the paradise we're going to go back to? No, it wasn't. So it's a paradise. It's a different type of a garden. Jannah in Arabic means garden. It's a paradise of a different nature. It was called Jannah to Liptila. The paradise we're going to go to is eternal. There's nothing prohibited in it. It's fully halal, totally halal, certified. 
I might not find the stamp there, but anyway, inshallah. That was another place. Allah tells him and his wife, do whatever you want here, but don't touch this tree. Guess what he did? He went to touch the tree. Allah says, do whatever you want, but don't eat from the fruit of this tree. Guess what he did? Exactly what Allah told him not to. Ay, yo, 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 yo. Imagine. Everything is okay, but not this tree. And the man, my greatest grandfather, went for the tree and ate from it. And what gives me hope, I read the story, I'm shocked in the sense that now that I'm older, see, imagine Allah tells you, listen, everything you can do, don't have this apple. And that's the apple you went for. By the way, according to the Islamic teachings, it was not an apple. That's, that comes from the Israeliyat. That comes from, it was just a fruit of the tree. Something from that tree. And that's the exact thing he did. But what's of greater importance is that as soon as he says, Oh Allah, forgive me. Allah says, you're forgiven. Oh, he did something serious. Serious. It was the only sin that could have happened at the time. That Allah told him not to do, he did. So isn't that for all of us sense of hope? Allah has told us not to do certain things and we've done them. Honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm included in that. Why should I take myself out? Who am I? I'm just like you. You are my brothers and sisters. And so when we've done things we were not supposed to do or we haven't done things that we were supposed to do, quickly turn back to Allah. If you bear patience and you are steadfast, Allah will never ever throw away your reward. You will see it. A day will come when victory comes in your direction. You know what the brothers said immediately? Oh, we swear by Allah that Allah has elevated you above us on this day. Thank you. Thank you guys. You threw me in a pit, didn't you? You wanted to kill me, didn't you? You guys did some nasty things. You really didn't want me to come up in life. I came up against all odds. Didn't say it that way, but that's what happened. He was not arrogant. You know what he said? They said, eh, indeed, Allah's favored you. Allah raised you above us. We were trying to r rise above you. Allah raised you above us. And guess what happened? Thereafter, and this is the end of it, he, he quickly calmed the situation. He says, may Allah forgive you. He is most forgiving, most merciful. May Allah forgive you. He's most forgiving. He says, La tathriba alaykum al yaghfirullahu lakum. He didn't wait to rub salt in the wound like we would love to do. Mm, mashallah. Look at that. You're going to pay for this, my sister. He didn't do that. No rubbing of salt. Decent fellow. Top man. Handsome guy. Blessed by Allah. Amazing human being. He suffered so much more than any one of us. He went through struggle upon struggle. According to one narration, 40 years later, there was a conclusion. 40 years. Some of us, four months, and we say, Allah's not listening to me. Four months, four days. I remember a guy, we told him, if you do this and this, and you, you read Salat al Fajr and you ask Allah and you cry in Tahajjud, Allah will give you anything. The guy comes back after four days. He says, I've been crying in Tahajjud. Nothing's happened. I said, man, man. The prophets of Allah, 40 years they cried. Yeah, four days. Come on. You haven't even started, bro. But Allah can give. Allah knows we're weak. Sometimes he gives us just like that. So that's it. He didn't rub salt on the wound. What did he do? He just says, La ali. I'm going to... Today, no retribution, I'm no recompense, I'm not going to take retaliation, revenge, nothing at all, nothing. La tathriba alaykum al Allah will forgive you. He is the most forgiving, most merciful. Go back home, take my shirt, give it, to the, give it to our father and bring all of them and come back here and we give you guys a good time. Allahu Akbar. Would you do that to your own brother who tried to kill you? No way. A lot of us would say, no, I can't, I can't, no. It's not him, it's his wife who's the problem actually. People say that. It's not him, it's the wife. Yeah. Wife, subhanAllah. Blaming the wives for no reason, bro. But that's an easy, it's a scapegoat. It's a soft target, as they say. My brothers and sisters, may Allah bless all of us. I hope that these few words of motivation could actually help us to think and process things in the right direction. What beautiful verses were recited by Sheikh Munir that actually prompted me 
uh, to talk about this surah because it's one of my favorite surahs actually. And I have quite a few favorite surahs. And inshallah, I, I, I'm very happy to be here in Luton. I see some faces I recognize, some I don't. But all in all, we're all brothers and sisters, inshallah. Pray for me. And by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray for each other. May Allah bless you all and give you guys barakah and success and goodness and alleviate whatever struggles you may be going through. Health matters. May Allah grant you the best of health and your loved ones too. Those who are not married, may Allah grant you spouses who will be the coolness of your eyes. Those who are married, may Allah make those spouses coolness of your eyes. Those who have children, may Allah Almighty make them the best of children. And those who don't have children, may Allah bless you with the best of kids. And may Allah grant all of us the best of this world and the next. Really, I'm so delighted to see you guys. Uh, like I said the last time, I really love Luton. And I don't know why. But I came here a few times, and I've been here quite a few times, actually, mashallah. And subhanallah, I'm always happy. Always, always so happy. I don't even feel like getting off. But guess what? Guess what? There's some munch waiting for us, inshallah. Barakallah. Jazakumullah khaira. Qulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad.